to present to you a video for this week's case study. So before I begin, right, let me just introduce the group to you. I'm Xun Wen and this is Ting Zhang and there's Zi Wei. Okay, so without further ado, let's take a look at this week's topic, which is on Walmart. Okay, I'm sure by now, right, all of you should have an understanding of what is Walmart, because Walmart is one of the biggest employer in the United States, employing more than 1.4 million people, which is almost like a quarter of our population. And this is, this is something that I always believe in, save money, be better. So what does it actually mean? Let us take a look at the video. Each week, more than 130 million Americans shop at Walmart stores, and each week, Americans are forced to pay high prices for their gas and energy needs. In an effort to communicate its commitment to saving people money, Walmart is rolling out a new advertising campaign this fall, complete with the company's first new tagline in 19 years. Save money, live better. Our new branding campaign shows our deep commitment to provide value to our customers. We want people to better understand how we help them save money on the little things in order that families can live better. New research shows that Walmart saves each American family $2,500 annually, up from $2,300 in 2004. Recently, Walmart lowered the price of its generic prescription drugs to $4, helping its customers afford the prescription drugs they need. Additionally, Walmart has continued to roll back prices on thousands of its high-demand products, helping Americans save on the little things, which puts money back in their pockets. We want to show how we can provide value to our customers with low prices on the items that they need and want. Beginning September 12th, three new 30-second TV spots will appear in homes across the country, featuring a series of simple, real-life customer testimonials. Additionally, Walmart is launching a new website, SaveMoneyLiveBetter.com, to educate customers on ways to save even more money in its stores. This campaign is actually an outgrowth of something that Sam Walton said. He said, if we work together, we'll lower the cost of living for everyone. We'll give the world an opportunity to see what it's like to save and have a better life. It's been 45 years since Walton first founded Walmart and began saving Americans money. And today, it's clear to see that the vision he had for his company is still thriving. Okay, after watching a video, right, I'm sure you all have a better understanding of what Walmart means by save money, live better. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you another video. But this time around, do keep in mind this question. Walmart does have to save money, but is it really better? If it's really better, is it really better for every single one of us? So do keep in mind this question while watching the video and enjoying the video. So what happens after all these natural resources are turned into products? Well, it moves here for distribution. Now distribution means selling all the toxic contaminated junk as quickly as possible. The goal here is to keep the prices down, keep the people buying, and keep the inventory moving. How do they keep the prices down? Well, they don't pay the store workers very much, and they skimp on health insurance every time they can. It's all about externalizing the costs. What that means is that the real costs of making stuff aren't captured in the price. In other words, we aren't paying for the stuff we buy. I was thinking about this the other day. I was walking to work and I wanted to listen to the news, so I popped into a radio shack to buy a radio. I found this cute little green radio for $4.99. I was standing there in line to buy this thing, and I was thinking, how could $4.99 possibly capture the cost of making this radio and getting it into my hands? The metal was probably mined in South Africa. The petroleum was probably drilled in Iraq. The plastics were probably produced in China, and maybe the whole thing was assembled by some 15-year-old in a maquillador in Mexico. $4.99 wouldn't even pay the rent for the shelf space it occupied until I came along, let alone part of the staff guy's salary who helped me pick it out, or the multiple ocean cruises and truck rides pieces of this radio went on. That's how I realized I didn't pay for the radio. So who did pay? Well, these people paid with the loss of their natural resource space. These people paid with the loss of their clean air, with increasing asthma and cancer rates. Kids in the Congo paid with their future. 30% of the kids in the Congo now have dropped out of school to mine coltan, a metal we need for our cheap and disposable electronics. These people even paid by having to cover their own health insurance. All along this system, people pitched in so I could get this radio for $4.99. And none of these contributions are recorded in any accounts book. That's what I mean by the company owners externalize the true cost of production. And that brings us to the golden arrow of consumption. Alright, so after watching the two videos, right, I hope you guys have a better idea of the two different sides of Walmart. And with that, we are more than ready to address this week's case study. Okay, an overview of the case study. 
Walmart always believe in minimizing cost to offer their product at the lowest price possible, and this is always the business strategy that they've been working for the past few years. Therefore, with 1.4 million workers in the United States, it means that actually labor costs will make up a huge percentage of their total operating costs. Therefore, everyone in the management team know that if they can reduce the labor costs, they will be able to reduce the total costs significantly. Thus, they introduced the chrono scheduling system. So what this system does is the system will actually generate different schedules for different workers on different days. And um, at first glance, right, I think that this is a very good idea because it actually reduces the manager's um, time to come up with new schedule every single day. And of course, when you compare to a human being and a computer, right, the computer will definitely be more cost-effective and much more efficient. But the computer system does not take into consideration all the factors involved. So what are some of the examples of these factors here? For example, the Walmart associate prefer to have a breathable working schedule. And with the Kono system, right, they are unable to achieve this. Why? Because the Kono system will actually just randomly decide who to come into this system, who to come into this schedule for the rest of the day. For example, if this person can work from 1 to 3 p.m. and maybe from 6 to 9 p.m. and you need someone to work from 3 to 6 p.m., you will randomly choose someone who is able to work at the timing to come in and take over this particular this guy. Okay, next, people who want to work to earn additional income by working overtime is unable to do so under the new system. This is so because the chrono system is designed in such a way that they will have to reduce the number of workers working overtime. For example, if this worker wants to work um, an overtime of 2 hours per day and if they reach the maximum quota, the system will actually try not to choose this person to come in to work for the day and instead choose someone who has not reached the quota to come in to work for that particular day. And lastly, at, for this system to work right, everybody has to be on call all the time. For example, if this person take MC, right, the system will auto-generate another person to take over him and that person has to come down within 1 to 2 hours. And this actually causes a lot of resentment among the staff. Okay, next we'll take a look at how different stakeholders of Walmart will view this new system. So when you talk about stakeholders, right, we're actually talking about the associate, which is the worker, the person who are actually being affected. Next, we're talking about the management, the person who come up with the, um, this chrono system. Okay, then we have the shareholders, people who actually um, hold a share in Walmart but does not take, um, but does not manage the company. Okay, and we also have the customer who get to enjoy the reduced pricing. And lastly, the government, of course in this case, will be the US government. Okay, so how will this different stakeholder view the new system? Okay, for example, for associate, right, they of course be very unhappy. Because right now, they endure the inflexible timing, the unpredictable timing, the unstable income, and they will be on call 24-7. All of this result in the loss of a work-life balance. And many of them are actually very unhappy right now, and they actually think of quitting the job. Next, we have the management team. Okay, the management team should be happy because you get to maximize associate working hours and you get to minimize operating costs, ultimately reaching the ultimate goals of cost minimization. And last of all, they will not alter their own working schedule, which means that the management, even with the new Kono system right now, they will not um, they'll still work from 9 to 5. Okay, next we have the shareholders. Okay, the shareholders are gonna enjoy the lower cost, the greater customer satisfaction, and as a result, the higher profit. And all of this will actually result in higher return on their investment, of course, a higher share price. Okay, next to the customers. Okay, for the customers, right, they'll get to enjoy the shorter waiting time. Why? Because right now, there are more people, there are more associates working in the outlet, which means that they can be more um, assistant, they can be more cashier to attend to them. Therefore, they need to um, shorter queue and shorter waiting time. Okay, next, Walmart may also be able to pass down the reduced labor cost to even cheaper product for them. So the customer will get to enjoy even cheaper product. So all the more, they should be happy about it. Okay, last of all, with the government. Okay, I'll go through that. For the government, right, um, we feel that they should take special attention on this because um, Walmart is employing more than 1.4 million workers in the whole, um, the whole United States. Therefore, if there's a high percentage of people who are not that happy with the situation and actually attempt to quit the job, you actually create a high unemployment problem in the country. Therefore, the government should be concerned about this issue.